Hello, my name is Matthew Benson and today I'll be taking you through an introduction to pneumatics and hydraulics. Pneumatic system is a system that uses compressed air to transmit and control energy. So by controlling the release of the pressurized air, it can be turned into movement. So the most common gas that they use for pneumatics is compressed air. Some examples of everyday pneumatic systems uh, can be seen below. So you have a soccer ball uh, pump that you can use to pump up soccer ball. You have a jackhammer. You have the uh, doors to a bus or a train. They use a pneumatic system. Um, in industrial examples, uh, in car production lines, and uh, mechanical clamps. There are two major components to a pneumatic system components that produce and tra transport compressed air which, and these include a compressor and a pressure regulator and there are components that consume the compressed air which are the execution components or cylinders directional control valves and assistant valves so how it works there are two simple pneumatic systems There's a single and double acting cylinders with the single acting cylinder when air pressure is removed uh, when so the uh, the tank fills up with uh, air, pressurized air, and that forces the spring to compress. When this uh, air pressure is removed, the spring will return back to resting position. So as you can see in the uh, animated diagram down below, you have pressurized air going into the uh, compartment, and then as it is released, the spring um, goes back to its resting position double acting cylinder so it has two uh, com air compressed ports this uh, allows um, via a switch to control which uh, air pocket the uh, compressed air goes into as you can see in the diagram below it uh, pushes it both ways so the advantages, advantages of pneumatics High effectiveness, so it has a limited supply of air, easy to transport, and it, the air, uh, compressed air is easily released. High durability and reliability. Pneumatic components are extremely durable and they cannot be damaged easy. Simple design. Um, so the pneumatics have a simple design, uh, which are relatively simple, thus it's more suitable for automatic control systems. High adaptability to harsh environment, so compared to the elements of other systems, compressed air is like less affected by high temperature, dust, corrosion. Safety. Pneumatic systems are safer than electric motor systems because they work in inflammable environment without causing fire or explosion. Uh, overloading only leads to sliding or termination of operation. Easy selection of speed and pressure. The pressure and volume can be controlled by a pressure regulator. This makes it uh, easy to use. Environmentally friendly, so it does not produce any pollutants as it's only using compressed air. And also, ec pneumatic systems are also economical, they aren't expensive, they're durable, their repair costs are significantly low compared to other systems. The disadvantage of pneumatics are relatively low accuracy, so the volume of air may change when compressed or heated, making it inaccurate. Low loading, so due to the size of the pneumatic systems, they can't drive big loads, they only should be used for small loads. Processing required for use, so compressed air uh, must be processed beforehand to make sure that there is absence of water or vapour or dust. Also has an uneven move, moving speed so the air can be easily compressed. The movement, moving speeds of the pistons are relatively uneven and it also produces noise so when the um, compressed air is released it creates a noise. So next we'll go on to hydraulics. Hydraulics deal with the mechanical properties of fluids. At basic level hydraulics can be seen as a liquid version of pneumatics 
It can be used for the generation, control and transmission of power via the use of pressurized liquids. So the hydraulics have many uses. They are most commonly used in car brakes. Uh, as you can see in figure one, they're also used in aeroplanes. Seen in figure two, they can be used for adjusting the wings or putting out the landing gear. And they're also used in heavy machinery such as your uh, big machines like excavators and dump trucks where they uh, require a lot of power to perform their actions. They use hydraulic power. So how it works. Hydraulics work by applying a force at one point and transmitting it to another point using an incompressible fluid. This fluid is usually oil. How it works. Hydraulics can use also be used to magnify force. An effort force on one piston can be magnified to move the heavier load with the other piston. As seen in the figure below here, you have a 10 newton force and it has to travel 30 centimeters at a 10 centimeter wide tube and with that it's able to push up a th with a 30 newton force in a 30 centimeter wide tube and it only goes 10 centimeters. So advantages of hydraulics. Power and versatility can transfer huge amounts of power with little input. Can be operated by unspecialized workers which saves on labor costs. Resilience. Uh, uh, Load-limiting hydraulic systems remain stable during power or system failures and where repairs are needed. The parts can be sourced locally since they are very common. Disadvantages of hydraulics so is worker safety. Notoriously sensitive to heat extremes and air pockets slash bubbles which, uh, which destroy the whole hydraulic system if it is unresolved. It's also been known for line ruptures which can lead to serious injury or death as the hydraulic system won't work if the line has been cut. The hydraulic fluid inside the uh, system is also flammable. Uh, with environmental costs, hydraulic mining or fracturing are becoming unconventional ways to mine oil and gas as it uses massive amounts of high pressure and chemically treated water. And energy efficiency, so due to the fluid flow resistance and leakage in the hydraulic system, it can make it un inefficient. Um, I'd like to thank you for listening to my video, and here are some references. See you later.